yeah, evil that might, people. That might count as disruptive. It mostly counts as dumb. Yeah. At least they weren't singing banana phones. If I hear that song ever again, I will explode. Uh-oh, he just gave too many people here ideas now. <laughs> Damn it. Blacklist, just Blacklist. Oh yeah, I can blacklist that song. I think what makes that song so evil is that it gets stuck in my head all day. Banana phone, banana phone. Exactly. <laughs> Slash me, blacklist, tech wolf. Okay, so I guess we should get started before it gets out of hand here. Uh, okay, so um, status of viewer beta and viewer development. Um, right now, they are almost identical. Uh, they differ only in a version number, I believe. Um, and um, that's... There's significant uncertainty about when uh, Chewy will come out of the beta channel, so it's very likely that that will remain true for a little while yet. That is, that the two will remain pretty similar. Um, so nothing much new there. Um, yeah. I think a new version of Chewy just went out in the beta channel. Um, we anticipate at least one more version before it goes to release, uh, as of right now. Yeah, Chewy um, is, and Serial tried just for just for kicks um, merging Chewy, and uh, doesn't merge. <laughs> I mean, everything conflicts. Yeah, um, that that doesn't surprise me too much, given where you've been making changes. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm sorry about that, but that's there's not not much we can do about it at this point. Well, we're certainly not going to try merging it. We're going to get service side baking out first, uh, and yeah. then we'll probably be you know a couple months trying to figure out what to do with Chewy. Then try to recover the there. There is again. one good thing that's happened uh, because of that, though. Um, it's uh, driven us to do a little practice, a little good software engineering, and factor out our changes to separate files to make future merges easier. Well, that's that's obviously good where you can do it, right? That yeah, was a good call on Serial's part. Um, so, uh, you know, that's. That's that's probably a great thing, and in fact, uh, it would probably be useful if you if you develop strategies that seem to work well uh, to document them on the on the in the open source part of the of the Second Life wiki, just to give other people a clue about how to do the same thing. Um, that would be. Oh, you that, mean that the, some of the linens need help merging Chewy in now? <laughs> I just merged Chewy into some of my development branches. Uh, I haven't I haven't done them all yet, but so far I haven't run into any any really insurmountable snags. Um, there's the the hardest have, one would um, be the one where we were adding request teleport. Have any uh, lessons been learned internally by Linen Lab with the Chewy? Uh, results of the Chewy. What sort of lessons do you mean? You mean did, are, uh, like perhaps keeping 
like perhaps keeping you know infrastructure changes separate from Interf you know, interface changes separate from rather than having a year's worth of work dumped all into one repo. Uh, I, I can't I can't say that anybody has made an is issue of that. Hmm. I mean, I I realize that it makes a problem for you, but you 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 should understand that 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 doesn't end up having very much visibility within the lab. And besides, actually, most of the structural changes that they were made were not bad changes. So. Oh no, I wouldn't suggest that bad changes. That yeah. um, I mean, we were expecting, you know, the Chewy merge to be, you know, Chewy stuff. <laughs> and if there were, you know, infrastructure changes and and back end code changes, that would probably come as a separate merge. And uh, so we were a bit surprised to see everything come all in one lump. Yeah, there there are some things uh, that I'm going to try to advocate for in terms of how we do um, branch development and and merging, uh, but it requires um, newer versions of Mercurial uh, that uh, are not available yet on Bitbucket, and I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure when they, when or if they ever will be. Um, if uh, if Bitbucket definitively isn't going to do them, then uh, you know I may I may uh, advocate moving our hosting somewhere else. But um, that that does support the newer features uh, because it's one of the weaknesses of Mercurial is it's very difficult to clean up your your development history and make things into nice clean chunks. Um, uh, so th there's the features in question, and this is this is purely personal, uh, you know, perspective on this. Not not anything remotely like Linden policy um, at this point. Yeah, like the like the squish capability in in Git and and the and uh, which which Mercurial. There is a version of that in, in newer versions of Mercurial. Um, it also supports a, a quite handy uh, capability in which the status of different r repositories can be modified to be publishing or not, and and the and the status of any change set is tracked according to which repositories it has been put in. So you can have a repository uh, when you create a new change set it's created in, in what's called draft status and then if you push it to something that's a publishing repository which all are by default but you can you can make them non-publishing then once it's been pushed to a publishing repository its status changes so that it, it then can't be it can't be you can no longer manipulate history around it um, but up until then you can you can do things like squish and 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 reorder um, so those are capabilities I got used to having when I was using Git, and it would be really great to have them in Mercurial. Um, but you need server-side support where you publish to make make them really usable. So uh, I don't know if we if we get that support in enough of our infrastructure, then I'll probably try to push people to start using them, and that may help clean up the. Uh, the history stream, the change set stream that, that you see. One can hope. Um, and if it if we discover that we can do it, then we can't. And maybe I'll have to start arguing that we should switch to Git, but that would be a real long shot. It would be very beneficial for third party viewers, obviously, because we're obviously always playing catch up with you guys. And um, and when it comes to you know, this is a good example where you know it's difficult for you guys to roll out server side baking until a significant number of third party viewers at least have it in a release state. And when we're playing, trying to play catch up with something that throws us really behind, that that affects you guys neg negatively as well. Um. So far, by the way, I want to thank you all for the effort you've put into trying to keep server-side baking 
on track. And uh, I don't, I'm, I'm very pleased to say that right now it does not look like um, support for, for it in third party viewers is going to end up being the limiting factor on when it can be deployed. So um, uh, I don't become complacent on the basis of that statement, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at how much progress you've made over the, over the time you've made it in. And if we can maintain that pace, I think we'll be in very good shape and, and the open source community will, will, uh, will not be the long pole in that particular schedule. So we'll see. Um, that's really good. Uh, is, so Monty is here, so we can move on to server-side HTTP changes, which are coming real soon now, right? Monty. Sorry, I was eating my lunch. <laughs> the um, server-side changes are coming. It is now out of QA. And we're trying to get a set of channels set up on Aditi. Um, most of that's actually pretty trivial work, but um, there are a couple of special regions we're going to create. Uh, sea of meshes, a sea of textures, a few other ones. Um, you can expect three channels to show up. A typical DIRT 203, uh, by the way, is a designation channel, which is going to be the thing heading to uh, release. And there'll be two other channels who don't have a name yet. Uh, turning, they're called Happy and Angry, um, with more generous in one case and more not restrictive, but um, more controlling. To put it that way, um, being more strict about uh, resource sharing, and resource fairness. And those will both go out. And as soon as we get those set up, I uh, will send um, emails out to the various lists: the server beta and uh, TPV and open source in general. The um, what else is interesting to it? And if you have regions which you want to have put into those channels, of course, use the talk to Meister, or actually, I can do it as well. Uh, so, usual procedures apply. But so far, it looks good. Um, the test will be, of course, when we go into a release channel. That's when we'll see the true load. But um, Pretty soon we'll be ready for uh, having, having you people get on there and see if you can break it and see if it works with your viewers. Actually, it would be great, Monty, if you could send that out to open source dev and the third party viewer announce. Yeah. Yep, I will. Uh, yeah, I'll do open source dev. Actually, I happen to be on the list for once. Um, so yes, we will. So do we have even a rough timeline, Monty, for when you expect that? I mean, sometime between now and the next meeting, for example? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. I actually was trying to get it out yesterday before um, server user group, server beta group. Uh, I just couldn't get the region set up and generate it. We don't actually have one, some templates set aside and we're missing some tools on the mesh side. Well, we were until I found one. Um, so it is ASAP. I just, that's the only thing in the way at this point. Um, so next week, it will be out next week. Will those test regions be very, very texture heavy? Uh, one set of them will be extremely texture heavy, around 6,500 textures or so. One set will be mesh heavy with low textures, and there may be a third with, with a mix. Yeah, I was going to say, you should have one with a mix. And there will probably be a, uh, some generic sandbox regions as well. in there and uh, try HTTPN. Put up some script-based servers to see if they perform and behave as expected. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see Nick's here. Um, 
So I, I don't, but I don't believe there's actually an update on server side baking. He sent out a note uh, a while ago that there was a new test viewer. Um, they're merging with Chewy and. I presume uh, Tank is in here, which is a big surprise, but um, I presume, Oz, that you, you've been informed probably by Nix that we're organizing to do um pylon test. Oh, is Nix coming in? Okay, we're going to do a pylon test with Nix, with our beta testers, which is being organized between Lassie, who is sitting right next to you, um, and uh, Tank and Nix. There's Nix. Um, and basically it's going to be just Firestorm a pile on test with Firestorm, and uh, hopefully that'll give you guys some ideas of what to expect from our viewer. Hey, Nix. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Your ears must be ringing. We have reached the server-side baking update part of the agenda, Nix, so... Anything to add? Uh, well, we are also doing a pylon test uh, with the Linen viewer um, at uh, next week's uh, beta grid user group on Thursday. Uh, I believe that's it's going to be after the meeting, and the meeting starts at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we have, since the last one, um, fixed a number of inventory issues on Aditi that were Aditi specific and we committed um, several other fixes as well as more extensive logging uh, so that if there are problems we should have an easier time figuring out exactly what happened. Um, yes, uh, definitely, definitely important to note that we are uh, switching to daylight savings time this weekend uh, so keep that in mind. Um, if anyone would like to participate, uh, just show up at the uh, Data Grid user group, um, and the viewer you should use is linked at the bottom of that wiki page. Um, we're getting more and more stable each day, and we're trying to get to a point where we will be uh, ready to uh, merge down. Uh, currently, we are working on our merge with uh, the Chewy viewer. Um, and uh, latest report is that we have our first uh, working build today, and we're going to be hammering on that before we actually uh, push it to our internal branch. Um, so if you guys have been uh, waiting to pull from us, I suggest doing it now before we uh, mix our code in with Chewy. Uh, well, from what I understand, we've just got 12 commits that you guys recently did, I believe. Uh, which we haven't pulled in, but otherwise we're up to date as far as I know. Yep, uh, the latest changes just went out uh, yesterday, um, and I gave uh, Tank a heads up on that. Um, so he should if you're if you're tracking these things, you should probably keep, you know, keep a a, a personal bookmark of where the last uh, change that you you merged was and what uh, what's out there because it, once the Chewy merge happens, it will start getting more confusing. Uh, I, I'm presuming you're 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 once you've done the Chewy uh, merge um, when you make server-side uh, appearance changes, are you going to indicate that it is a server-side appearance commit in, the, like, the commit message? Uh, I will encourage the team to uh, list the JIRA that they are working on in the commit message. So if you see a uh, commit message that starts with a shining issue um, or a sunshine issue, uh, then you should know that that's something our team is working on. Okay, because that'll make it uh, a bit easier for us to try to sort out uh, what's what. 
I'm not going to guarantee we're going to have a hundred percent success rate on that, but uh, okay. I will definitely uh, encourage our team to uh, be a bit more cognizant of that uh, once we uh, merge with Chewy. Okay, other uh, server-side appearance see. issues, questions? Latif is typing. I don't necessarily anticipate any additional pushes to Sunshine External before the Chewy merge, uh, since we are working on the Chewy merge uh, as we speak. Um, it is possible that we will be able to have a side branch that will continue to get fixes without the Chewy merge for a while, um, but I don't know that that is something we are going to maintain yet. Uh, it's going to we're going to have to look at how difficult that would be to keep up. Um, but officially, I would anticipate that yesterday's push was probably the last push before the Chewy merge will go in. As always, if anyone has any uh, difficulty with the merge on any viewer, um, please uh, let me know. Uh, I'm certainly more than happy to help to make sure that uh, this code gets out. Uh, we do have a uh, couple of uh, bugs uh, still, um, at least one that I'm looking at today uh, with the uh, local appearance editor. Uh, not updating your textures properly. Uh, so there will probably be a couple uh, additional fixes um, that might be helpful uh, for you guys to have. Um, but I'll try and uh, keep you guys in the loop on that. Uh, yeah, if you could... Uh, I, I know that, um, Nix, you're working with, with Tank closely, and um, Tank is basically trying to keep track of your commits, especially for service and baking. And uh, so, I don't know, I, I know that you guys are pretty busy, but if you see something that goes in that doesn't have a sun association to it, it would be helpful if we knew. Yeah, uh, definitely look for Sunshine as well as Shining. Um, sometimes we'll commit just with the internal Shining issue number. Um, and I'll encourage the team to list the external Sunshine issue number as well. Um, but either of those should indicate that it's our team working on it. Uh, and our, plan, uh, our plan is basically, um, everybody's asking when we're going to release server-side baking, and our, our intent is, for the most part, is to be ready to release server-side baking. Um, when you guys give us, you know, hey, guess what? Next week, we're going to put service side baking live, and uh, so, you know, then we get it out. Um, but we don't want to release service side baking too early, because if we release it, and then you guys have more code to put into it, then suddenly we have to do another release. Um, and releases are tricky with us, because a lot of people. Right, uh, of course. Uh, and, really, yes, uh, that is, um, I think you are seeing a series of related symptoms to the bugs I'm working on right now. Um, as far as us being sure we're going to have enough ovens, it's going to be a pretty slow rollout process, and we're doing a lot of load testing to make sure that we uh, are acquiring enough ovens to do all of this baking. I presume the um, uh, pylon test with Firestorm beta testers is going to help you Establish that as well. Yeah, uh, I will definitely um, have us 
be looking at the uh, load metrics that you guys generate with that. Um, as soon as you guys know exactly when that's going to happen next week, let me know, and I will uh, do my best to try and be there. Uh, keeping in mind, I, I am on an East Coast schedule. Uh, Lassie is um, our QA lead, uh, Nix, in case you didn't know. Um, and so Tank and Lassie are working together um, to try to organize the pylon with you guys. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm making a note to uh, look over my schedule and drop you a note. Or me, and I can pass it to him. Whichever is easier. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, catch that. I said, or you can pass it to me, and I can give it to him. Whichever is easier for you. Okay. Would actually be good if um, Tank, uh, you you and Lassie and Nix were on um, an email comms together Where's for Skype communication either? purposes. Since we all have Skype, we could do it through that too. Or through Skype, yeah. If you guys created an a, a, an extra Skype chat. How would that work for you, Nix? Uh, that would work absolutely fine. Uh, Tank should have my uh, Skype. Yeah, I do. Okay, Tank, why don't you establish that, create um, a Skype chat with the three of you? Okay. I would prefer that people use the... Uh, Sunshine external viewer uh, for the uh, pylon that's going to happen after uh, the server beta user group. Um, and then there will be a separate pylon for the firestorm testing. Right, uh, of course, yeah. It, if we keep those separate and everyone uses the same viewer during each pylon, we should be able to sort out the bugs a lot easier that way. I don't know that we're getting our beta testers on the linen pylon, uh, Lassie, we but I know that we certainly will have our, our um, support folks and probably a bunch of devs in there. We had some beta at the last pylon. Did we? Oh, did. good. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the Firestone pylon is going to help us because we're trying to establish... Um, where we stand now that we've got service side baking merged, uh, we sort of need a good test uh, to determine how well that's working so that we can um, figure out a schedule uh, for us and, and how much needs to be fixed in order for us to be release ready. Uh, so that when you guys, you know, let us know that you're flipping the switch, that we'll be ready for it. Uh, so the pylon actually helps us quite a bit as well. It's going to help us establish where we are. And certainly if you guys find any bugs that you think um, will reproduce on our viewer, definitely let us know. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're trying to be very available to be uh, reactive um, to any bugs that come up. Has there, speaking of bugs, has there been any more progress about the side effects of the new Z offset uh, feature? Uh, we're still uh, talking about it uh, internally, um, and uh, we we realize that uh, the new solution will work well for people who have uh, things like shoes that uh, put them above or into the ground, uh, but less, uh, but should not be very effective for the use case of needing to adjust your offset uh, for animations. Um, so we're we're still talking internally about that. Uh, I don't have anything new to report. I, I'd just like to express my 
um, gratitude and appreciation that uh, Linden Lab has taken that seriously and are doing an initiative to address that. That's fantastic. Well, we're at least discussing it. We'll see what comes out of that, but um, we, we've, we've got some of the use cases covered, uh, and we may or may not end up covering them all. We'll, we'll just have to play it by ear at this point. Uh, yeah, we have we have at least uh, some uh, impact examples. Um, but if people have, uh, if one or two people uh, have particular animations or screenshots or videos of the extent of the problem and what it looks like, um, I can pass those along to our product guys. Uh oh. Banana bullets. Uh, yes, Latif. Encourage anyone who had trouble at the last pylon to try the latest viewer and retest outside of the pylon. Uh, if you're still able to reproduce problems, um, then that's definitely something we need to look at. If you're unable to, um, then we will see if we can see some of the same symptoms at the next pylon, and that might just be a load issue or an ADD inventory issue. Um, but we should have even better logging this time to let them know exactly what state uh, things were in when where they failed. So there, there are two pylons, uh, Lassie, and um, I, either way, um, being able to test both at the pylon and outside the pylon is probably a good idea. Uh, we did a number of uh, fixes um, since the last pylon. Uh, I think one or two small changes in the viewer, um, which you guys should have uh, merged up to you guys. Um, but the majority of the ADD inventory fixes were on the back end. Um, and so everyone should uh, see the benefit of those uh, at this point. Uh, I'm not going to say that all ADD inventory problems are fixed, um, but uh, we definitely uh, improve things uh, pretty substantially. I'm I'm very glad to hear that. If really can't break it, nobody can. Really, have you considered a job in QA? <laughs> <laughs> she you actually can't helps. Have she her. helps. Yeah, you can't have her. <laughs> <laughs> we would be lost without Whirly. Absolutely, hopelessly lost. Not to mention, Alexa would have a uh, some competition with her driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, she already does. Alexa would be the first person to try to get Whirly hired. Uh, actually. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, right. Anything else for server-side appearance before we move on? Let's try not to miss, miss out. There, there isn't actually yeah. much to update on the rest, but. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, I just had a phone call, so I missed just a few minutes. Uh, to refresh your inventory on the beta grid, uh, what's the current procedure? 
Uh, it's that's still password change, question. isn't it? Or is that uh, changed now? Password change is what triggers it. Um, that process is uh, unfortunately at this point still fairly likely to break your inventory. <laughs> Um, Oops. So the, the 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 uh current the current process is change your password which will trigger a refresh and break your inventory and then let us know that your account is broken and we'll fix it. Um we are we know what the problem is. We have uh solutions we're looking at but they're not rolled out yet. Uh, my vote goes for a uh, web page with a button on it. Refresh my inventory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, that would be a great idea. That's a great idea completely separate from uh, this issue. Uh, Beyond the, the scope. <laughs> the, the, the issue right now is not in how we're triggering it. It's in what's actually happening when we try and uh, copy your inventory over. So whether it was a button on a web page or a password change, uh, you'd get the same results. But that is a uh, good uh, feature request for the future. Yeah, just to let you know, that feature request is probably about going on five years old now. <laughs> I can uh, so we, uh, say not my department. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, I understand um, that uh, we've destroyed a service side baking uh, version of Firestorm to our QA department. And I understand that our beta testers are currently, uh, or have that, has that been completed now, Lassie? Uh, last I heard was that they're basically establishing that they can connect to a DD and that they can get their inventory before we uh, set up a time with Linen Lab to uh, do the pylon on Firestorm. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Okay, moving on. Um, materials, we have made great progress in QAing it, and uh, QA is winning. Uh, so it's, it's still pretty severely broken in a couple of ways um, that are not merely cosmetic. So we're, uh, and, and thank you to Worley for some, some help on some of that as well. Um, but uh, we, are, we are focused on what the key problems are and uh, hope to have, as soon as they are fixed, which, you know, has the usual level of uncertainty, um, we will, we will make a materials repository available so that you can see what the changes are. Um, they are not going to be anything like as difficult as Chewy. Uh, well, here's the problem for us, and, and I should probably let you know what our schedule is going to be like for uh, materials. Um, basically, we're looking at we get server side baking out first, spend three or four months possibly merging Chewy into Firestorm and getting that into a stable enough state that we can then merge materials. So Firestorm may not see materials for several months. Well, Chewy will be, materials will not get an opportunity to get out until after Chewy is in release, which means that materials will have been merged with Chewy by the time, possibly by the time you see it, in fact, uh, likely, in fact, uh, by the time you see it. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, we understand that we're behind that and, and that has the usual level of difficulty associated with it. Um, well, it would be so, my hope that we could get materials out with Chewy and Firestorm, but like I say, that's that's realistically going to be several months away for us. Yeah, well, it is what it is. We, there's not much we can do about that. 
Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a, we'll, we'll, and it's, it's designed to be backwards compatible in the sense that non-materials viewers won't, it, it, it won't be like mesh where you, you see something completely unreasonable. Um, apologies to the people who worked hard trying to make the mesh, the prim approximations of mesh as good as they could be, but they're still only very crude approximations. Um, you know, you, you'll still see a, re, a, you know, an object that looks like a current second life object. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, it's not, it's not going to be certainly not as big a change in the software as Chewy and, um, Hopefully, no more difficult to port on its own than server side baking was. Well, if you, I mean, if you guys include um, uh, materials with Chewy, then chances are we'll have them both done at the same time. Basically, by the time, basically, it's just that our priority is server side baking, then get Chewy organized, uh, and then materials. But if you guys mix materials and Chewy together, then you know we'll be doing that at the same time. But right, well, uh, materials will be post chewy and pro almost certainly post server side baking um yeah so uh but of course you're doing those in the other order so it, it, but i think it's in in terms of the merged complexity you're gonna you're gonna see it as as something on top of chewy and not especially difficult once you have the chewy things sorted out good good so um because we'll have done that merge um and i don't think anything could be as difficult as chewy between, one is one is you know build floater changes and and rendering and 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 some new code, um, and that doesn't overlap with Chewy very much. Uh, so that's what there is on that. You know we're we're sort of stuck on a couple of bad bugs, but we at least have a good handle on what the bugs are. Um, Fmod ex is just stuck in the pipeline at this point. I mean, it's just sitting there waiting to to get a window. So um, so it's ready, but it's waiting for Chewy. Uh, what about um, Coco? Uh, that's in a pretty similar state. I mean, it's got some testing experience happening. Uh, but uh, it, it's, again, it's mostly... Um, when we've got these really big things, serial really big things, we've got a head of the line blocking problem, and that's where we are today. So, um, sorry, I'm late, but uh, did we talk about the announcement Monty made about the network changes a few days ago? I think it was yeah, that the was, HTTP that was stuff. First. Yeah, you, yeah, you should that. see that on on a DD any day now, and we'll put notes on the lists. Okay. Uh, probably about next week, by the sounds of a tank. Um, Oz, you're going to have this recording up today or yep. tomorrow? Yep, sure. Okay, so tank can grab that. I'll, I'll try to put it up as soon as we're done here. I think that's... I've run out of agenda items, so any anything that we haven't talked about? Um, I, I noticed Widely's not here this week. C should I take that as a sign that he's gone to uh, work on a group ban list for us for group <laughs> chat? He's just—I think he's just on vacation. So, oh, yeah, how's damn. your progress doing uh, on that uh, feature request? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> That—that that, I, I can tell you right now is going to be a topic. From you may as well put it on the agenda as a permanent item because it's going to come up every meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I apologize, Oz, but um, I'm going to be a right royal PITA. Well, and somebody, somebody, somebody edited into the topics on the agenda wiki page, and and uh, uh, I'll, I'll get my boss to look after that. <laughs> Fine, I, I, I don't, I, I don't object to having standing topics as long as you understand that. There are going to be a lot of weeks where the, they're going to the stand there for a long time. 
Yeah, that, that's okay. I, I, I don't. I don't have any beef with that. Did your guys from uh, Firestorm support got uh, like a million messages yeah, about this this you. offline thing? What's that, Lutif? Sorry, say uh, that again. The Magnum the, issue. The, the, the oh. offline uh, messages thingy. Oh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Ed. You're, no, this I is one thing. Yeah, I don't know how that passed Q&A, really. That, that's, that, that's amazing. So, but apparently, because uh, we just right, came what, from a support what meeting, issue are we talking about? the issue was is that if um, somebody is on a Magnum region right now with this week's rollout that just passed, um, and they message somebody who's not on their friends list, every single message they send, they get returned with users offline, blah, 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 blah. Um, bug 1884. Even if they're online. Even when they're online. It's a fantastic bug. It's spectacular. So, like, you know, somebody calls up our support and says, you know, I have a problem. And every time our support responds back, they get a message saying, this user is offline. This user is offline. Which, you know, an hour of conversation gets really annoying. Uh, this definitely came up at the server user group um, last night. Um, and it is a, it is definitely a known issue uh, internally. <laughs> Is it going to be gone with the next rollout? <laughs> That's the real question. Uh, I, I'm sorry I have to laugh, but yeah, it's an old issue. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's somebody trying to fix the, the privacy problem and then messing it up completely. Kudos for trying, though. Similarly. Yeah, my but how do you how do you distinguish somebody sending you an IM to see if you are online and somebody you are having a conversation with? Well, similarly, my um, partner was noticing the other day um, messaging between friends that they were all showing offline to each other. Yeah. Yeah, they especially were if you actually have the, friended. So, if you have the option of not. Sh Showing the other person uh, if you're online, I think, triggers it as well. Well, they all had this on, and they kept logging, and they got to the point where one of them could see the other one online, and they could, and they could teleport each other, and they'd stay in the same region, and yeah, it was quite messy. So the real question here is, can our support teams, collectively, all the third-party viewers here, can our support teams expect that problem will be gone? The next rollout. Uh, I'm sorry to say this is the first I've heard of it, so I, I really can't uh, respond to that. So I will know next Tuesday. <laughs> I guess it'll oh, be dear. two weeks. It, it'll be two weeks, just because it'll roll out to VRC <laughs> next week, and then the following week it'll be in. Uh, I, I think they said on the on the on the server beta group last night that they will uh, they will ro you know roll back the change that that caused okay, this. So. Okay. Yeah, that's in the that's in the stream. That's uh, still going to be on. That's still still scheduled to be on Magnum next week. And uh, it it claims to have the fix claims to have passed QA, so it should be fixed in next week's RC rolls. Oh, good news! Good news. How did that pass QA in the first place? Yeah, that, that's that's an amazing one. <laughs> well, it happens. I I have no idea. I, I you know I don't have any visibility on how these things happen. Speaking of visibility, um, on main channel, I've been noticing the. Avatar visibility is a little wonky um, in that I can see avatars 4,000 meters away on parcels that have the privacy setting enabled. Oh, yeah, it's the interest list changes that um, 
Andrew, was it Andrew or Simon? I can't remember. One of them did. Andrew. Andrew? Yeah, that's, um, that's been that interesting. That didn't seem to go so well. I'm just sitting in my house, I look on the rain, I'm like, why can I see my friend in the sky having sex on his parcel? Oh, I presume it's That he doesn't want me spying bug. on. Yeah, if we get bug reports on that kind of thing, uh, we will definitely pass it to the right lenders. Well, I'd be surprised if it's not, but it definitely should be reported. Well, it's been... A, I've been seeing it for probably three weeks or so, off and on. I can't get a solid repo on it. Cause it seems More like, could it be two weeks? Because it wasn't it two weeks they rolled out the interest list changes? It could be. Been a couple of tries rolling out the interest list changes. Yeah, over the last couple of years, like oh, I don't know, <laughs> ten years. <laughs> At the most recent version of the interest list. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Appreciate the yeah. effort, though. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's they're trying. They're trying hard. It's, In, it's a real hard list. problem. Interest list uh, has yeah. some yeah, good effects when you only when you teleport in. But if you are moving around, the new interest list code is not that good. Yeah, I've actually I noticed that too. Is that um, I was standing in uh, our our support region, in fact, uh, by myself, and I turned my camera the opposite direction and came back, and almost half the region had disappeared and refused to re-render for me. I had to teleport out and come back in. For me, when I came here just now, the uh, chair reser thing in the center of the room was the last thing to res. Everybody else was here. All the chairs were here. All the buildings were here. And then finally, the chair razor shows up. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed, I don't, and, and I don't know how to nail this down well enough to, to report it, um, but if I'm standing somewhere and someone teleports in right next to me or walks up behind me in such that they're not in, in shot, um, I get the notice that they enter chat range, but I don't see them until I actually turn my camera all the way around. They're all getting something completely different than what I'm getting. <laughs> Kata, I really just dropped um, a, a, a Linden Jira. She's asking if that's uh, what you're see. what you're seeing. Let's see, copy this manually because I'm not firing up Chrome just now. I'm beginning to think that interest list is going to be a similar situation to like avatar baking and HTTP, where it kind of is going to need a rewrite. It's just too complex. I would just like to be able to send the. The uh, region simulator software is, is okay. Forget the interest list. Just send me all the objects, and I'll deal with it. <laughs> no, that is not it, Whirly. Um, they're in position already. Um, like I'll log in, and I can see every avatar on my region, regardless of their position and where I am. And your draw distance? My draw distance is like 128 meters, and I'm seeing avatars at 4,000 meters from the surface and parcel visibility is enabled on the parcels <laughs> right so i shouldn't be able to see them at all even if they're in draw distance range that's what i was getting was pretty silly Kata, have you gone to uh, have you brought this up with um simon at, at their office hour or their user group i can't make those meetings oh. <laughs> i'm just curious how do you see people at four thousand meters away that's what I'm saying. That's that's the problem. It's this is like it, it no, definitely but I'm needs curious, physically how do you, how do you do it? You 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 decide to zoom in on the sky all of a sudden or no? I can um uh, the radar function in uh, the viewer says, <laughs> shows you which avatars but, uh, are being in draw distance and yeah, I just but, use uh, it to see who's in my region, which is just you double click on the radar that we have. It zooms the camera onto them. Yeah. It also gives an uh, indication that uh, they're within draw distance, and they shouldn't be within draw distance when they're that far away. No, no, the 128 draw. Yeah. Well, but well, it sounds like that needs a Linjira. That that's got to be a local calculation, no. though, right? 
no, it's not. Um, the what avatars you're able to see is done server side. So server knows, oh, your draw distance is 128, so I'm going to send you avatars that are, you know, this close to you. Well, there's actually a limit on this. Server's not supposed to send you, I believe, anything further, any avatars further than, uh, I think, 512 or 256. Yeah. As far as you can I think it also actually, depends it's, upon up and down versus left yeah, it's, and right. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's 256 it's meters 256, above if I you. Correctly. Um, up as far as you yeah. can see. So you shouldn't be able to see an avatar that's, you know, 4,000 meters vertical above you ever. Um, so it, it, there's a whole lot of uh, things going wrong. This is very similar to what happened with um, the first time they messed with uh, interest lists in which um, you could see nobody in front of you passed, I think, like 100 meters. You couldn't see anybody behind you. Instantly you turned around, but then anybody beyond, like, some extreme distance you could see. So you were seeing avatars in other regions behind you that were thousands of meters away. But you couldn't see an avatar that was, like, 10 meters vertical above you. It was very strange that, that time around. But this time it's just different but similar. But it would it would be useful if you would make an effort to to write up what you're seeing and and at least some approximation of how to repro it. Uh, I'll see if I can get it to happen again. I just haven't been on all that much. That would give uh, Tank an opportunity to point that directly to uh, Simon and Andrew. Okay. Okay, and I'll try. I'll try. Uh, with myself and all, and I'll see if I can't come up with a reliable reproduction of the one that I was talking about. So I'll yeah, know. yeah, it's if it's, it's on intermittent channel. reproduction. You know, that's better than nothing. I mean, reliable yeah. is obviously way better than that. But uh. well, it's getting it quite reliably. Um, it seems to happen if I log in, and those avatars are within are in those positions already. You know, three thousand meters away in the sky on another parcel. Parcel has privacy enabled. I'm not sure reliable and interest list can be used in the same sentence. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> well, I, I can produce I something yes, so, re re reliably, but... Uh, reliable to the, uh, to the proper word, like... Um... Getting not. I know that uh, for scripted engines, these uh, interest rate changes have made uh, quite a lot of problems. For instance, I, I cannot, if you script an agent to, to sit on an object, you cannot get simulator to give you the, the, the object update for, for the seat. And I know regular viewers also have the trouble with the region crossing while on sitting on stuff like on vehicles. Yeah. Because you, you don't get an object update on your own seat, and without the object update of your seat, you cannot calculate where your avatar is, so your camera gets completely lost. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how that got that back, but I'll take it. I'm trying to restore a file from backup, and... I keep getting failures, but just randomly the f file restores into the folder. I, I, I don't know, but I'll take it. Um, so we we got two, min two minutes left. According to SL time. Yeah. Uh, Oz is just counting the seconds. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I don't have anything urgent. My, my next... Uh, I'm just sitting here waiting for a build to finish, and then I'm going to knock off for the day and Go to the movies. Ooh, what movie? We haven't heard Oz's dogs today. Uh, I, I, they were running around so much while the I was blowing the snow today that they are all pooped out, tired. So they're being nice. Um, Sunny and sixty here. I have to go see Oz the Great and Powerful tonight. <laughs> oh, that's <Nice>. fitting. <laughs> Don't let it get to your head. <laughs> My wife doesn't want to see it, and she's out of town for the weekend. So, uh, it, it, and it's opening this weekend. So, it all the, the stars just all aligned. So, uh, yeah. that's too funny. <laughs> Try to see it in yeah, IMAX just... 3D. Uh, I can't see 3D, so it doesn't. That that just gives me a headache. Uh, so, oh, uh, uh, I guess I haven't tried the IMAX 3D. 
Uh, just two different things out there. I've tried it also, in other movies. It, it just gives me a headache. It's, it's okay. just like that twenty percent that can't, that either can't see or can't handle three D effects. And I can't do stereo stereo vision, uh, so I end up watching them with Actually, one eye closed. I think it's as much as thirty percent <laughs> from what I've heard. That yeah, there's two different systems. See three D effects. One flashes the, the new three D is and the other amazing. one is yeah. And the other one uses two projectors. I prefer the two projectors 3Ds because it's much more smoother. Well, the big complaint within um, like movie critics is uh, 3D causes the picture to be darker. Well, if, if it's using a single projection, yeah. of course it's going to be darker. Yeah, I noticed that at our local theater that the 3D makes it almost too dark to really see well. Yeah. You lose a lot of the color reproduction. Well, it's because That's why I prefer the dual projectors. The time, right? Yeah, yeah. Dual projectors are nice. I think, uh, I think the my theater near me right now has the dual projector, but the fancy one my friend likes to go to in L.A. only does single projection, which I thought was kind of silly considering the tickets there are like twenty bucks each. Yeah, about the only ones doing dual projection 3D is the IMAX theaters. I don't know if any other regular theaters is doing that. Well, my well, I saw The does, Hobbit in IMAX early on. and uh, in, in IMAX 3D, and, and it absolutely blew me away. It was um, amazing. I can't handle Was that one in uh, HDR or uh, HFR or not? It, it was the, the highest one that they offer on, on the IMAX. Great big screen. It was, it was, I mean, the movie itself was fantastic, but the 3D was really well done and not overdone my biggest complaint i often go to the movies with my kids and like the kids cartoons 3d i mean that stuff makes you duck it's just overdone yeah it's just done too much it's uh, it's 3d yeah kids love they do that gag like all the time for the movie (laughs) yeah i thought it was star wars 2 on a omni dome that was cool it's a 360 degree dome that's over your head jesus I, All right. I personally All right. we, we seem to have wandered off the topic, <laughs> yeah, so... a little bit. <laughs> oh, a little. <laughs> have a good weekend, guys. Thank you, Lindens, for coming. Take care, Oz, and Nix. And Monty. And Monty. Well. Oh, I didn't see him here. Sorry. Yeah, the original IMAXs were 70 millimeter projectors. Expensive, but worth it. I've seen films on those twice, those original ones. Omnimax, have you seen a film on Omnimax? The Omnimax is the dome. It's it's a dome that that's covers 180 degrees about. left, right, I up, seen... down. Oh, that... Yeah, that's amazing. That's mind blowing. Yeah, I watched Star Wars on that. I've seen that was cool. a couple. Movies on the Omnimax Max screen, but there were regular movies. I have not seen an Omnimax Max movie on Omnimax Max screen yet, but I heard it blows you away. That's incredible. The few I've seen are actually documentary stuff, like um, sharks underwater, and you know that kind of thing, and and one from uh, the space shuttle thing. Which, but it's just mind numbing because you like you don't have to have three D. It it really is all around you, so you can just look in any direction. Yeah, they have one at the OMSI, or the Museum of Science and Industry. Museum of so Nature here? Yeah. Why do they have them like museums? It's... Yeah, that's what I was just going to point out. But mostly the ones that are showing the IMAX and so on, those are ones that were built by IMAX themselves. Because uh, yeah, IMAX so. offers two different licenses. Uh... One is a commercial license, but you need to pay out the ass for, and the other one is, you know, for, you know, like the science groups and everything else, where uh, uh, IMAX, you know, fronts most of the money, but they can only show their IMAX movies that they want, which is mostly the documentaries and so on. They're not allowed to show, the, you know, the AAA movies or something like that well, in that's there. That's kind of 